Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and I'm going to take a little bit of a break from the doom and gloom of the last video that I did to tell a little bit of a story about something that happened last night at my radio club's board meeting. Uh, I serve as vice president on the board, um, so we were having our, we have a board meeting every single month, and then we have a general meeting uh, later in the month. Uh, so I'm, I'm at the meeting last night. Oh, and before I get into it, let me, let me lay a little foundation. Uh, I'll tell you a quote that I'm particularly fond of, and that'll explain why I'm doing this. Uh, nobody is completely worthless. Everyone can at least serve as a bad example to others. It's an important thing to remember. And, and this goes towards learning from mistakes. And something I learned in the military, and it was applied later when I worked at the Sheriff's Department, was that whenever any notable situation happens or any notable incident happens, it's important to debrief afterwards. Whether it's a success or in particular a failure, it's important to identify lessons learned from that incident. Uh, and in that process, you're going to identify deficiencies in equipment, training, mindset, procedure, methodology, etc. And the intent of this is to come up with solutions for correcting that, uh, particularly if it was a mistake, for correcting that mistake and ensuring that it doesn't occur in the future. It's a good policy for people to follow no matter what walk of life you come from. Uh, identifying your mistakes, taking responsibility for them, learning from them, and instituting corrective action is part of our development. Uh, failure to do so keeps you in a state of arrested development and you're never going to become better at what you do. So last night I had a little little boo-boo pop up that identified something where I need to do better. Uh, so let me get into the story and it'll all make sense. So we got this new guy shows up at the board meeting last night. He just recently got his tech license and he just about, as he put it, he had about 15 minutes with the radio. It came earlier in the day and he had tried to plug in or program in the uh, club's repeater from the front panel. And I took a, they, they asked me to take a look at it because, um, and, and like most clubs, um, when people show up for the meetings, everybody tosses their you know pet HT up on the table in front of them, and it's kind of a a little little bit of flex and show off going on there. One thing that I do is because I have so many HTs at each club meeting, I usually bring a different HT, um, and and that gives people an opportunity to to look at and handle uh, radios that they may not have ever seen before. Uh, so it's kind of a little service I provide. And as it turned out last night, one of the ra the radio that I showed up with was my Anytone ATD878UV. Now, the radio that this guy had gotten and uh, had tried to program was the B-Tech version of this. Forgive me if I, I, don't, I don't know the model number of that, but it's functionally identical to the Anytone radio. It's just the same thing, just OEM to B-Tech. So uh, they asked me, hey, can you come take a look at this guy's radio? And I thought, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll go take a look. Now, here's the problem. Had he shown up with an FT60, or had he shown up with like a VX6, it would have been his lucky day. If it was the FT60, I would have just uh, gone in and, and uh, I would have pressed my FW key and my set key and it would have gotten me into the menu and I could have went and identified, you know, I could have set his, his frequency and I could have set uh, the offset and the tone and, and on and on it goes. Um, and that's something I know from those radios because I've, I've had a lot of experience with them. They were early on my, my first couple of MCOM radios. So one of the things I thought was important was to master how to front panel program those radios. So if I had to make adjustments in the field, I could. Um, so I got really good with Yesu, and I also can do the same thing with the Beofang system. I can get in there and uh, <clears throat> I can set up a repeater and on and on it goes. But with the Anytone, the thing about the Anytone radio is if you like to tinker and play with radios through the computer programming system or CPS software, um, the Anytone is the radio for you. Uh, it is, uh, it's not complicated, but there's a lot of features and there's a lot of, a lot of angles and details, plus it's a DMR radio. So um, people tend to lean heavily on the CPS rather than front panel programming for this. And that was my situation. Uh, because of the number of channels I have in this radio, uh, this radio has every usable repeater in all 58 of California's counties. I also have uh, usable repeaters in Nevada and Arizona as well and northern Mexico. So I've got a, 
I've got a lot programmed into this thing, but I did it all through the CPS. To be honest with you, totally honest with you, not once ever did I have I ever even tried to front panel program with this thing. So they asked me to come take a look at this radio. So I thought, eh, how hard can it be, right? I know how to get around the menu. I, I do at least know how to do that. So I grab his radio up and I know, okay, I know you press the green button, you get the menu. So already we have massive success occurring. Uh, so I, I come down here to settings and I click on select and I click on channel set and I click there and that's where the wheels started falling off. I'm looking around, nothing's happening. I can't really find, it has new channel and it has delete channel. What about existing channel? Channel type, oh, that's a problem. T and then we get into this stuff and I don't even know what this stuff is. I got transmit power, I can do that. Oh, we got offset, but I hit offset and yeah, it, it was a mess. So as I'm doing this, I'm being real quiet and the sweat is starting to beat up on my forehead and I'm starting to, hands starting to shake just a little bit. And then I'm realizing that all of a sudden the klaxon is going off, fail, fail, fail. And at some point I had to just lean back and look at the guy and say, hey, here's the deal. I only ever programmed this thing in the computer. I don't know how to front panel program. I should have just said that from the very beginning. Instead, I tried to act like I knew what I was doing and I just come off looking like an idiot. Um, I don't really have a lot of ego invested in that, but I sort of don't like looking like a dummy. I mean, so this guy's first impression of the club is that the vice president of the club uh, is some blowhard that owns a crap load of radios that doesn't even know how to work them. That's a that's a, a viable assumption that he could make. It might even be par partially true to some degree. But the story is this. It wouldn't matter if this was just one of my many radios that I took in there that I never use and they just sit around on the shelf or I keep them handy for the next time I need to develop a pouch for one. But this is one of my MCOM radios. Um, part of my MCOM package, of course, is my VX6. Um, I'll, I might have an FT60 around. The ICOM ID51, okay, and this. So amongst these four radios, plus an FT65 might sneak in there. These are the four radios I use the most in my life. Um, the problem is when it comes to the Anytone, unless it's programmed in, I don't know, I can't, I can't affect any change on that radio. Now, again, I want to point out, it's not super important that just because I own HTs, I'm supposed to know how every intricate detail works on every single radio that I own. And even for last night, even that incident wasn't all that important. But what it identified to me is this, if I'm going to be throwing this thing into an MCOM back, even if I do have it programmed up just the way I want it, I have been in situations where changes have had to be made on the fly in terms of, for instance, uh, like our club repeater, you have tone and then you have tone squelch. Uh, and, and the difference between those is tone is just, you send a PL uh, or a CTCSS tone on send and that unlocks the repeater. On receive, there's no required CTCSS tone for the radio under normal circumstances, but our club repeater has it set up for tone on send and receive because there's a competing repeater that we sometimes pick up. So if you don't have tone set on receive, uh, you sometimes will hear the other club that's way over on the coast. But for certain circumstances, like when we're running club nets and stuff, um, there's also, uh, we have our, tone, our identifier tone that goes off sometimes. Um, and if you have tone squelch set, you don't hear that and you can be competing with that. It's a long story, but suffice it to say, I, that's just one identified situation where in the field, I might have to make a change to the CTCSS. Um, there may be in a real serious emergency situation, or if I'm traveling, um, you might have to enter in a repeater set on the fly from the front panel. And if you don't know how to do that, that's going to become a problem for you. Now, it's not the end of the world, but if you, the thing that really got me was if I don't even know how to do the most basic functions from the front panel on this, that's a bad idea to have that as, a, as an MCOM radio. Now, it never would be my primary. I would always have a VX6 or at least an FT60 to fall back on, but I don't want to have to do that. And the point is master your equipment. And if you're going to use equipment, be careful about using too many different sets of equipment that are that are 
completely different in terms of operation from the equipment you're used to using. If you're going to have a bunch of HTs, you're probably going to end up like me identifying four or five that are your go-tos. If those are your go-tos and those are the radios you might be likely to use when it counts and when it means something, you need to know, you need to master those radios and learn them inside and out. It's a long, arduous process, but that's kind of the part of the fun of the hobby, at least it is for me, is mastering the equipment and learning how to do cool stuff with it. Um, if it was just about you know, buying, getting a blister pack, opening a radio, putting batteries in and talking, well, that's called CB, <coughs> or that's called FRS, or that's called GMRS. And those are perfectly val valid systems, but there's not a lot of flexibility. When it comes to ham, when it comes to, uh, to amateur radio, uh, in terms of what we're talking about, um, being able to adjust and tune and fine tune and modify your equipment on the fly uh, via front panel programming, critical skill. So this pointed out to me, it's something that I've been kind of lacking on. Maybe it's something in your life, having heard this, that you might be thinking, yeah, I don't know how to do that either on my radio. Well, now's the time to learn. Um, let me throw out a couple of things uh, that can help you with that, by the way. And what I like to, you know, I carry a radio around everywhere I go. And I, like a lot of people, sometimes I'll go to a family event or something and I get bored. Now, what a lot of folks will do is they'll crack, crack open their iPhone and they'll start looking at Twitter or whatever, which is an in, intensely unhealthy thing to do. Instead, on your iPhone, once you do this, you can download the PDF files for the manuals for all of these radios. I have on my phone the manual for each of these three radios. I even have the manual for the ID51 on PDF on my phone. So an interesting little challenge to do is you got some blank spots open in your memory. Pop that open and start programming some, you know, program in your local repeater on a completely fresh channel and then see if it works. And it's a good skill to develop. And when you're done, just delete the channel. Learn how to do that as well. Um, learn how to do things like, and this is a real important thing that immediately interests everybody, is how do you skip a channel? So if you get scan going, and this is something that, this is the reason, by the way, why I downloaded the PDF files on my phone. Because I invariably, I'd be somewhere and I'd be scanning and we would have a repeater that had um, uh, either activity I didn't want to hear or they were having a problem with a repeater. So you're getting a lot of ah, 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 kind of sounds as, as you were scanning through and it would lock on that every time. The ability just to be able to skip a channel so that you can free up your scan to hear other valuable channels later. Um, I would sometimes I would get a little puzzled on that. Now, of course, I, I learned after having done it a couple of times with the FT60, I got that down, same with the VX6. But I still, on some radios, I have to look that up to figure out how the hell to do that. So having the PDF files on your on your iPhone or smartphone or whatever device you, you carry around in your pocket um, can be a, an interesting little thing to occupy your time and then really lock those skills down. But I guess... The total end moral of the story is, dude, do you even front panel? Um, you need That's something you need to know how to do. Don't rely too much on the computer. I do understand that with certain radios, the only way that you can get all of the functions of the radio is to do it on the computer. But the basics, such as how to skip unwanted channels, how to program in a basic repeater, how to get to the VFO mode so that you can enter a frequency set so that you can transmit simplex, all of these things are core functions that you need to be able to or need to have committed to memory on the radios that you've selected as go-to radios from when it counts. So I'll wrap it up with that at that point. And uh, thank you for listening. And hopefully you got something out of this. Otherwise, have a great day. And uh, hopefully things will get better all the way across the board uh, in terms of the world situation. So with that, see you later. 73s, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankees, Scott in Southwest Visalia, California. Have a fantastic day.